what's going on, 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 what's going on. What's up guys, welcome back to CRL, Calm, Relax and Learn. In this video, I am going to show you my Dylan 1100 Progressive Reloading Press. Now, this is one of my treasured possessions. I, uh, I spent two grand in it. Um, plus, I have uh, some accessories that I've added. And I wanna go ahead and, uh, and show you what they are. As I showed you, you know, the operation of the actual press. Okay guys, so at this point what I am going to do is I am going to insert a case on the shell plate and I will show you how that works. Um, I'm going to unlock the uh, device here, one of the accessories that I have here. I'm going to unlock it so that it will feed the case. Okay, so if, if you consider this uh, the first station, it'll feed the case. Now I am using brand new Starline uh, brass because it feeds the best on my Glock competition. And again, you've seen that Glock in other videos. It's like the, the multicolored uh, Glock. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna advance the handle. And you will see how the case will advance to the first station. And over here you see the, the lead eye. And this is going to undersize the brass. Now this is brand new brass. It doesn't really need to, to be sized. But I'm just... Okay guys, so we're back. Apologize for the... A break I just had to reposition the camera okay so at this one I'm gonna advance the arm and the case will be undersized and it's gonna move it to the next station which is the swaging die I'm gonna do so I'm gonna remove the tab and I'm going to take this case out and I'm going to insert a case, a special case from, let's see, Ammo Brass LLC. If you can see, it is a case that has a cutout that allows you to see the depth of the primer. Uh, of the primer swaging tool okay so this is a close-up of that swager do you see the bottom how it comes up and down what you do is you can adjust the height of that swager rod that comes from the bottom to make sure that it covers the entirety of the primer pocket so for each different recipe you can see how deep the case pocket or the primer pocket is being uh, swaged. It's a great tool. I mean okay guys, next station is the priming station. And if you will notice over here, you will see the primer coming out. And what that will do is it will seat the primer inside the case and if we had that tool that it goes on the top like I mentioned it'll definitely it would definitely center the case and allow you to to do a perfect primer seating then the case is going to advance to the next position okay guys as you can see in the monitor that I have 
you will notice that as the case advances from the powder drop, you will notice the case is visible with the primer, and that way it lets me know that when I throw the powder, it's not going to spill because there is a primer there. Now I'm backing out so you can see. the powder measure actuate and it drops the powder in the case when I bring the lever up it automatically advances and allows me to put a bullet in the case let me see if I can do it with one hand okay, just place a bullet in the case and oh actually no what's going to happen now is going to go up and the lockout die is going to come up it's going to allow you to see that line which is going to be le uh, level with the die the mechanism worked so that means that there is a perfect amount of powder it's going to go up it advances to the next station I don't have a bullet drop die but I do it manually put the bullet and then well it's a little crooked it doesn't really have to be super straight anyways it goes up into the seating die the die automatically seats the bullet at the perfect depth This is a crimping die. It crimps the bullet. The bullet falls into the bin. Perfect fit. Okay, guys, so what I have in front of you are two different ways that I can gauge if my bullets fit the chamber. I have the chamber gauge. The bullets fall, they're even. You have another one here. Perfect. Another way is to put, drop them in this arm and off uh, billet aluminum. You know, this is uh, very sturdy, very heavy. And what you do is you drop the bullets, and each of these holes is an equivalent one of these if you will notice that you don't see any protruding cases they are not under the level if they're under the level it means that the case is too short or it's under crimped or over crimped they just ride at the perfect level amount if it was uh, too long it'll just protrude a little bit but these are fitting perfectly and that is how I fit my bullets next I'm going to show you the different accessories that I have on the Dillon 1100 okay guys as far as accessories with the Dillon 1100 there are so many uh, and I will show you the ones that I have that work the best for me starting with the Armanoff uh, cam lock so let's say you're advancing the press and you only want to advance one case well as you press the handle this goes to the back and this lever here locks it so that no more bullets are being fed and you can work on that one for like special recipes and whatnot all right moving I'm gonna show you the light that I have on the press and this is a skylight I forgot where I bought it from but it definitely illuminates the shell plate awesomely okay let's see number three I have this plastic thingy-majigum here that when you run out of primers you, you uh, the rod you can hang it here because ask me how many times I've misplaced that rod 
it's crazy then moving on to the powder uh, measure I have a baffle that allows the powder to flow evenly believe it or not sometimes you have to tap it and the baffle it's kind of similar to similar to this but it's double it goes up and it flips up as well as you can see it's uh, this way and then it goes up this way and it has holes in them okay let's see what else um, in the back of the press I have the arm and off quick release for the powder you pull this and you are able to release the top assembly of the uh, powder measure and you don't have to unscrew or screw which becomes a pain in the ass and that is an arm and off part down on the bottom where the act, uh, actuating rod is I also have a quick release uh, part and I don't, I'm not sure if that is arm and off or not but allows me the quick release of the rod then moving on I have a camera and this is a relatively inexpensive camera I think it's OE walk maybe it's made in Japan but as I actuate the lever you can see the shell plate advance and it shows me the cases and the bottom of the cases to determine if there is a primer or not okay continuing with the accessories of course I have the tools the tool bracket in the back with the extra bin and the bin of course that comes with I also have the bullet bullet tray to place all my bullets and I am missing oh over here the tabs I forget that there's a name for them these are the tabs well these are not the tabs that come come with I think the tabs that come with are a little bit smaller these are maybe a uh, range panda uh, brand but these are a little bit longer a little bit easier to handle and back over here you see these two different tabs and these are rubberized because once you drop the powder and you advance there's a slight chance that the case may uh, spill a little bit of the powder and especially if you're doing a nine millimeter major uh, that case is fairly fairly full and that rubber allows the case to transition a little bit smoother and don't spill and then it is I got two of them because it goes from the powder check to the bullet uh, insertion and they both need to have that uh, I believe that's that's pretty much it oh up on the top I have a case mirror and it's super handy because I'm relatively short and uh, <laughs> uh, that tells me how many cases there are let's see what else I got here that might just be it oh on the uh, powder measure I have this uh, Taylor Tactical hold on let me see if I can zoom in here Taylor Tactical knob which adjusts the powder and it's good because you can visually see how many cranks you've done of the wheel and I think guys I think that's just about it I don't think I have anything else on the press that's worth mentioning um, but I tell you it's, it is a great press um, and let me let me say a note about the Dillon 1100 yes it is a commercial ish press and out of all the commercial producing uh, bullet presses or bullet producing presses you know there's a mark 
and there's a few other ones that are like you know a lot more expensive maybe 3 or 4k and this is for the price 2k is best now if you're a new reloader um, yeah this may be a little bit much and it's say only if you shoot you know X amount of like a K or more than a K of rounds a thousand or two rounds per, per month you shouldn't buy this that's bullshit you know I don't shoot I, I love to shoot I have a lot of different calibers that I reload of but uh, if you like the press and you got the money hey go for it as long as you understand the basics of reloading because on this press you know it's a progressive press and uh, you definitely need to know what happens in each process as it is I've been reloading for almost 10 years and sometimes you get a little confused as to what's going on and you forget to move a case and it gets crushed but uh, hey if you like it again if you got the money and you like it hey go for it don't let people tell you you know buy a single stage or buy a we have different Dillons such as these that requires a manual uh, advancement of the shell plate. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got. I hope uh, you've learned something. I appreciate you coming to come relax and learn. It was awesome having you. And if you can, just give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Leave a comment and definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one.